Hey guys, it's Preston Minerval here, and I'm back with another Forex video for you guys today regarding Forex quotes and common Forex jargon. Perhaps the most difficult challenge for new investors in the Forex trading industry would be understanding the standard for quoting currencies. When you see you see when a currency is quoted, it is done in relation to another currency so that the value of one currency is reflected through the value of another. For example, let's say you had the USD slash JPY, those two currencies paired together, the US dollar and the Japanese yen. The forex quote would look a lot like the USD and yen equals 118. This is referred to as a currency pair. The currency in the left, in this case the US dollar, is referred to as the base currency. The currency on the other side of the dash, so on the right side, is known as the quoted currency. The value that you are seeing here is one is the value of one U.S. dollar versus the Japanese yen, which in this example, the U.S. dollar is worth 118 Japanese yens. This is known as as exchange rates. Exchange rates between currency pairs are represented as abbreviations. There are two different ways to quote a currency pair, either directly or indirectly. A direct currency quote is simply a currency pair in which the domestic currency is the base currency, while an indirect currency quote is a currency pair where the domestic currency is is the quoted currency. So if you are looking at the Canadian dollar as the domestic currency and the U.S. dollar as the foreign currency, the quote would be the CAD slash USD. The direct quote varies to foreign currencies and the quoted or domestic currency in this case remains fixed at one unit. Take for example again the Canadian dollar versus the US dollar. If Canada is the domestic currency, a direct quote would be 0.85 Canadian dollars is equivalent to one US. I mean sorry, one Canadian dollar is equivalent to 0.85 US dollars. And the indirect quote for this would be the inverse of our cash slash USD, which would be 1.18 US dollars is equivalent to one Canadian dollar, meaning that we could purchase one dollar and eighteen cents a Canadian currency with one US dollar. In the forex spot market, most currencies are being traded against the US dollar, meaning that the US dollar is frequently the base currency in the currency pair. In this case in, in these cases these are known as direct quotes. This would apply to our situation earlier with the US dollar in the Japanese situation. However, not all currencies have the US dollar as the base. The Queen's currencies, those currencies that historically have been tied with Britain, such as the British pound, Australian dollar, and New Zealand dollar, are all quoted as the base currency versus the US dollar. The Euro, which is relatively new, is quoted the same way as well. In these cases, the US dollar is the counter currency and the exchange rate is referred to as an indirect, indirect quote. Most current currency exchange rates are quoted up to four digits after the decimal place with the exception of the Japanese yen, which is quoted out to only two decimal places. Something many of you may not know is cross-currency. Cross-currency is when a currency quote is given out, is given without the US dollar as one of its main components. The most common cross-currency pairs are the, Euro, are the Euro Swiss Chef, Euro German British Pound, and the Euro Japanese yen. Cross-currencies allow more options to invest with and more trading possibilities in the Forex market. But note, they are not traded as often as non-cross-currency pairs. So basically, I mean, they're not as traded as often as pairs that have the U.S. dollar in them. Like real-life investing, investing online also includes two components in every investment. A bid and an ask. When trading Forex, there is a bid, otherwise known as the buy price and the ask price, otherwise known as your sell price. The ask price refers to the, the quoted currency that is that has to be paid in order to buy one unit of the base currency, or how much the, or how much the market will sell one unit of the base currency for in relation to the quoted currency. The bid price is used when selling a currency pair, otherwise known as going short, and reflects how much of the quoted currency will be obtained when selling one unit of the base currency, or how much of the market will pay for the quoted currency in related to the base currency. The quote, note that the bid price is always smaller than the ask price. Less. If you want to buy this currency pair, that means you have to intend to buy the base currency and are therefore looking at the price or the ask price to see how much in Canadian dollars the market will charge the US dollars. 
according to the ask price, you could buy one US dollar with 1.2005 Canadian dollars. However, in order to sell this currency pair or, or sell the base currency in exchange for the quoted currency, you would look at the bid price. This tells you that the market will buy uh, one US dollar base currency. You'll be selling, so basically, you're selling to the market that one dollar in US base currency for the price equivalent to 1.2 Canadian dollars, which is the quoted currency. Whichever currency is quoted first, again, this is known as the base pair, and as the base currency here, the first pair quoted in a currency pair is the base currency. The, the currency that is quoted first is always the one that is, is always the one in which the transaction is being conducted. Either you buy or sell the base currency. Depending on what currency you want to use to buy or sell the base with, you refer to the corresponding currency pair, otherwise known as the spot exchange rate or to determine the, the price. Spreads and pips on the other hand. The difference between the bid price and the ask price is called the spread. If you were to look at the following quote, for example, the Euro USD dollar, um, 1.2500 divided by 0 0.03. Now, that spread would be 0 0.0003 or 3 pips. This is also known as point. Although, although these movements may seem insignificant, even the smallest point chain can result in thousands of dollars being made or lost due to leverage. Again, this is one of the reasons why that speculators are so attracted to the forex market, because even the tiniest price moves can result in a huge profit. The pip is the smallest amount a price can move in any currency quote. In this case, the US dollar, euro, British pound, or Swiss France, one pip would be 0 0.0001. Now, with the Japanese yen, one pip could be 0 0.01 because this currency pair is only quoted out to two decimal places. So, in a forex quote, the USD chef, for example, the pip would be 0 0.0001 Swiss France. Now most currencies trade within a range of 100 to 150 pips per trading day. Remember base currencies are on the left, your quote currency or your counter currency is always on the right. The bid price is the asking price, while I mean is the buying price, while the ask price is the selling price. And the difference between those two prices is known as your uh, spread. And your spread is determined by the number of pips in between those two bid and ask prices. Now, like I mentioned in my other video, there are three types of Forex markets. The spot market, which is the most popular and common, the forwards, and the futures. One of the technical differences between the Forex markets is the way currencies are quoted. In the forwards and future markets, for example, the foreign exchange is always quoted against the U.S. dollar. This means that the price is done in terms of how many U.S. dollars are needed to buy one unit of another currency. Remember that in the spot market, some currencies are quoted against the U.S. dollar, while for others, the U.S. dollar is being quoted against them. As such, the forwards and future markets in the spot market quotes are not always going to be parallel with one another. For example, in the spot market, the British pound is quoted against the U.S. dollar as the British pound and the U.S. dollar. This is the same way it would be quoted in the forwards and futures markets. Thus, when the British pound strengthens against the U.S. dollar, in the spot market, it will rise in the forwards and futures market as well. On the other hand, when looking at the exchange rate for the US dollar and the Japanese yen, the former is quoted against the later. In the spot market, the quote would be 115, for example, which means that the U that means that which basically means that one US dollar would buy 115 Japanese yen. In the futures market, it would be quoted as in parentheses one divided by 115, otherwise known as 0 0.0087, which means that one Japanese yen would buy 0 0.0087 U.S. dollars. As such, a rise in the U.S. U.S. and Japanese yen spot rate would equate to a decline in the Japanese futures rate because the U.S. dollar would have strengthened against the Japanese yen, and therefore one Japanese yen would cost less than one U.S. dollar to purchase. Anyway, guys, that's kind of some of the basics between behind forex quoting and some of the jargon thrown around in the forex industry if you have any questions about any of the forex quoting processes or the jargon i'll be more than willing to help you out i mean i know when i first started out i went to binary options for a reason and that was because forex seemed really complicated especially with their terms i didn't had i had no idea what pips were spreads 
or anything like that. So if you guys have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask me. I'm always here to help you. Um, anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more videos to come.